Hello and welcome to another episode of It's Tea Time. I'm your host, Jonathan Sellers, and joined as always by my side is the Director of Athletics for Troy University, John Hartwell. And John, we got a lot to talk about, so we'll get right into it with uh, basketball on Thursday night. Yeah, we do have a full plate coming up over the, roughly the next 10 days, but certainly uh, Thursday night, a big night for both uh, Troy women and men's basketball uh, against in-state rival South Alabama. So. Uh, all starts at 5:15 uh, for the women's game, and uh, followed roughly 7:30 by the men's game. So certainly, we we want to encourage uh, our students and uh, you know faculty, staff, and and uh, season ticket holders, and you know even if you hadn't been to a game uh, before this year, uh, you know certainly want to invite folks to come out to Trojan Arena and make a loud home court uh, environment. Uh, uh, for our games against South Alabama. Well, and that home court showed Saturday with, especially with the women's team, who they picked off a, a big victory over the Sun Belt leader right now in Arkansas State. Certainly, uh, Arkansas State seven and one coming in, and uh, you know Ashley Beverly Kelly and Joanna Harden, uh, as they've done all year, led our team. But gosh, what what great supporting effort! Uh, you know they they played with a whole lot of intensity on the defensive end, forced a lot of turnovers too, and beat the number one team. And as uh, you know, I, I know uh, Shanda has told them, and, and as I told several of the players this week, hey, you beat the number one team in the league. There's no reason why we can't win every game yeah. left. And uh, ho hopefully that confidence, and, you know, they've won three of the last four. The only one of that, in that streak they lost was a, a tough overtime game. So they really seem to be playing with some momentum now and uh, look forward to seeing what they can do the rest of the season. Well, and something else that's going to be happening Thursday is going to be honoring the 3.0 club, and that's always something good to see, just how many student athletes are really pushing it in ap academics as well. Absolutely. For the fall semester, we had, I think, 205 student athletes, right. which is well over half of our student athletes who achieved a 3.0 or above. And uh, certainly, uh, when you talk about our student athletes, as I tell folks all the time, they're called student athletes for a reason, not athlete students. Right. Uh, take care of the classroom part first, and uh, certainly uh, they, our student athletes did a great job, uh, you know, fall semester. And I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, compliment Matt Mayot and Becky Whetstone and our uh, academic staff as well, because they do a tremendous job. They sure do. And uh, something else we got coming up before Thursday is tomorrow is a signing day. I know all the football recruiting junkies. It's a it's a big day for them, but it's also a big day for Coach Blakeney and his staff. It absolutely is, and those guys have, uh, you know. Uh, been putting in uh, countless hours uh, uh, really since re recruiting uh, got uh, got fully cranked up after the regular season was over. So really since the end of November, those guys have been uh, literally uh, globe trotting all over the country, uh, chasing down p players, visiting with parents, uh, and uh, it seems to be coming to fruition. Uh, you know, we got a couple more commitments this morning, and certainly uh, tomorrow is is the name on the uh, dotted line uh, uh, that will ensure uh, you know the future of Troy football and we're very excited about it they, they've done a tremendous job it's probably one of the few times you'll see all the coaches joined around a fax machine all all celebrating the faxes coming in and so that's a, a, an exciting time a absolutely right and uh, certainly we've got uh, uh, men's and women's track with a signing day right. tomorrow and uh, and certainly soccer as well and uh, you know uh, speaking of soccer uh, Jason Hamilton, who we just recently hired as our new head coach, uh, was most recently uh, an assistant coach this past season at the University of Florida, where they won the uh, regular season SEC championship, uh, advanced to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Uh, he'd spent some time prior to that at the uh, University of Miami as an assistant coach, uh, played collegiate soccer at the University of Detroit, uh, and he brings a tremendous resume, a tremendous amount of enthusiasm uh, and, and our uh, young ladies on our soccer team are very excited. Our incoming recruits are excited. So they have signing day tomorrow as well. And I actually saw some, uh, some pictures. He's already uh, out there on social media, and he's p uh, putting pictures up of them training. So they're already getting after it, and no time wasted. Absolutely. So we're, we'll be excited when fall uh, soccer season comes around. But for all those uh, recruiting tidbits, you can stay tuned to TroyTrojans.com. And I know they got a recruiting uh, database getting ready for tomorrow. They'll have their coffee ready around the fax machine a as well. Absolutely. Adam Prendergrass and his staff and media relations uh, We'll, we'll be on go uh, starting early tomorrow morning as those uh, 
faxes uh, come in with the signatures of the young men joining uh, the Troy Trojan football program. So just keep an eye on that. And then another big event it, this week is softball. And uh, it's a big game, of course, of playing Auburn, but not just that. They're really unveiling the new facility. Yeah, and uh, the new uh, softball facility uh, is really tremendous. As I visited with some, uh, some campers and our, our players, uh, our current players, Saturday after they finished practice and, and told them, you know, looking around, uh, I don't think there's a better collegiate uh, softball facility in the country, and certainly, you know, you wanna, we want to thank our administration, uh, the university, Dr. Hawkins, Dr. Bookout, for helping us make that become a reality, but certainly the donors out there, too, that, uh, that played an instrumental part in us being able to construct, again, what we think is as fine a collegiate softball facility as there is in the country. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a true grand opening a little bit later in the spring, probably sometime in April, uh, once the uh, the indoor facility uh, is is completed, but in terms of the field itself, uh, the grandstands, the deck area, the press box, uh, they will be all set to go uh, Thursday afternoon when we take on the Auburn Tigers in softball. Yeah, I haven't got a chance to see it up close and personal yet, but I'm looking forward to that chance. And, and that uh, first pitch has been moved. It's at three o'clock now. Is that, that right? That is correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, again, Thursday, a big day between the softball and then. Uh, women's basketball followed by men's basketball. So, hey, for those of you that can come out, uh, come join us about 2.30 that afternoon and we'll let you go uh, about 9.30, 10 o'clock <laughs> that night, hopefully after three uh, Trojan victories. Right uh, over all over in-state opponents. That would be uh, real big. Absolutely. And speaking of in-state opponents, uh, the softball team is going to be hosting a tournament and one of those opponents is going to be Alabama. That'll be on Sunday. They're the sixth ranked team in the country. So you're, you're capping off a big tournament uh, against a big opponent. So it's going to be a big weekend as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Two o'clock uh, first pitch for that uh, game against Alabama on Sunday afternoon. That tournament will last all weekend, both at our on-campus facility as well as the sportsplex uh, as well. Uh, so a uh, lot of softball action this weekend. And all Troy's games will be at the, the softball complex here. That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and preview a little bit next week, getting you ready for baseball season. It's right around the corner. Yeah. Uh, what better way to, uh, to spend your Valentine's <laughs> than coming out uh, to watch the, uh, the opening uh, act of uh, Trojan Baseball 2014. Got Northern Kentucky coming to town. Actually coming for a four-game set. Okay. There will be a single game. Um, on uh, Friday, a doubleheader starting at 1 on Saturday, followed up by a single game Sunday afternoon to close out the series. So uh, I know Bobby Pierce and his staff and players have been working very hard and uh, look forward to that opener on, uh, on Friday and, and look to pick up with the momentum that, uh, that they had last season that carried them you know, through a couple of victories over Alabama and Tallahassee and the NCAA regionals. And yeah, that was exciting into last year and uh, I know Coach Pierce is, is excited to see what his team can bring because there's a lot of turnaround this year but uh, he and Coach Smart and Coach Phillips all do a good job out there. There absolutely is and certainly uh, you know we, we've got the, the pitching back, uh, right. got, uh, got two-thirds of our weekend rotation back and, and really uh, all three it if you count Will Starling, who was an early season starter, went out with surgery and his, his recovery process from that surgery uh, has been a thing of almost astonishment for our sports medicine staff, <laughs> but, but a tribute to his hard work and getting back ready and uh, certainly excited about the pitching returning. Uh, we do have to fill some bats, uh, right. some, some RBIs and some power there through the middle of the lineup, but uh, you know, they're excited about this squad. All right. Well, we got a lot going on, and as I said, uh, you can always stay tuned to TroyTrojans.com for all that information to find out what's going on for all the, the game times and all that stuff because, uh, as we said, there's a lot to, to keep up with this weekend. Yeah, we really do have a lot going on. One more mention, mm -hmm. uh, talking about basketball for next weekend. Uh, next well, Saturday uh, on the 15th of February, uh, 5 p.m. men's game, actually swapping it around okay. from our normal course of of events, but having the men play first at five o'clock, and that's because it's going to be an ESPN national television game. Uh, looking to pack Trojan Arena for that game, we've got a lot of uh, uh, local promotions going on for that game, and certainly uh, uh, a, an opportunity to uh, showcase uh, the Trojan Arena venue on national television against a very good Georgia State team that's nine and zero right now, and. Uh, 
in conference play. So we need everybody to come out for that one too. Get loud, be there early, and uh, cheer the Trojans on. This isn't ESPN3, it's not ESPNU, it's, it's ESPN. Absolutely. So uh, that'll be a big one, the fans. We want to show a, a good representation and show what the Trojan Nation is all about. Absolutely, it's going to be a fun weekend. All right, well, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jonathan. All right, stay tuned for more coming up on It's Tea Time. And welcome back to It's Tea Time. And we're going to talk a little about the women's basketball team with the head coach, Shanda Rigby, and coach, You've got to be excited. You had a big win on Saturday over Arkansas State. Right. It was great to beat the number one team in the Sun Belt Conference coming into our house. We had a great crowd there, one of the best I've ever seen since I've been at Troy. It was very exciting. And it wasn't really even much of a close game. I mean, y'all beat them soundly. What was the key in that game? Well, uh, what, what a lot of people don't realize is that even though they are first in the conference, we were beating them at halftime at their place, and we got up by nine points in the second half. Um, I never at all felt like they were that much ahead of us as far as uh, talented-wise or anything like that. It's just still we're changing our mentality to believe that we should be on top. Right. And uh, we've won the last three out of four games. The only one we've lost uh, in that stretch was an overtime on the road. And so I think the tide is turning, and uh, we're getting more confidence, and it's catching up to our ability. Well, you beaten uh, last year. You beat a uh, top seed during the season. Mm -hmm. This time, you beat Arkansas State here at home as the top seed. What's kind of been uh, the motivation going into those games against the, the number one team? I think that's kind of what you do here at Troy, isn't it? Isn't, isn't that our staple? You kind of go so. beat teams that people don't think you can beat. I think so. I think that's the heart of a Trojan, and uh, I'm very proud that the women's basketball team has reflected that in beating Middle Tennessee last year, which was a paramount moment in our program, right. and uh, and a first, and then this year beating the number one seed uh, in Arkansas State. And now you've, as you said, won three or four, your lone loss coming in overtime. So kind of uh, picking up some steam, picking up some momentum. What's been the key and then what do you have to do to, to keep it going? Uh, I think just um, keep reminding the team that they are as good as these other teams. It comes down to you, you, we, have, we have the heart. That's mm -hmm. not the question. It's the confidence. We've got to have the confidence to do this. It's our time. It's tea time. It's our time. <laughs> Let's go with it. All right. And then uh, you get that chance again Thursday night against South Alabama. Big in-state rival, a team that uh, it's kind of a rivalry that's gone back and forth over the past few years. They're kind of on a roll right now too. They've won three of four. Uh, just give us a preview of that game. Right. That's going to be an intense game. They beat us twice last year in, in the regular season, but we got the Sun Belt Tournament. They had beat us handily before and we got the Sun Belt Tournament and knocked them out of it. And it, and it cost them a lot because they were expected to make a run in the tournament. Um, and so there's a, there's a little bit of a rivalry going on, and it's, and it's in state, and it's good. It's good stuff. We just hope people will be here for it and cheer really loud for us. Right. It is a home game, and uh, I know you all want a big crowd just like the Arkansas State game. I know they're, they're honoring the 3.0 club, so good chance for the athletes as well as a bunch of fans to be out there. Right. Thursday's a great day. Softball opens up that day as well. Right. So a lot of good things going on, on campus and Thursday. The men's basketball right behind it. Exactly. And speaking of men's basketball, we'll talk a little bit about men's basketball coming up on It's Tea Time. After our look at the women's basketball team, we're now going to head to the men's basketball team. and We're joined by Ben Fletcher, one of the assistants on the men's squad. And Ben, uh, a tough loss last Saturday at Arkansas State. You had a good crowd behind you, and you were in the game throughout, and the second half just kind of uh, Arkansas State just kind of took over. Yeah, I thought we played well, really well at the beginning of the game. Uh, the kids followed the game plan to a T. We got their big guy, Vance Like, in foul trouble, which was one of our keys going into the game. And um, they had an injury uh, with another one of their starters, Big Washington, which it hurt them. And what it did was it forced them to do something that they hadn't done all year, and that's go small and playing four guards, which we didn't know what they would do when they go to four guards because we hadn't seen it all year. Right. And they got, we hit a little dry spell right there at the end of the first half, which, uh, which led to them going on a big run, and we never could recover. All right, well, you got another chance this week against South Alabama, big in-state rival, yeah. um, two teams that are kind of trying to find that spot right now right. in the Sun Belt standings, and I mean, just what's the, that game going to look like? Well, South, South Alabama, for everybody who doesn't know, they, they returned the, the, the Sun Belt Player of the Year right. and the preseason Player of the Year in the conference in uh, Augustine Rubit. Uh, really talented scorer inside. Uh, they have uh, another forward and Michael Ammons, uh, really good scorer inside. And then they got a guard uh, transfer from Miami that's, uh, that's put up good numbers the last two years. So it'll be a tough basketball game. And like you said, both teams are, are, are right there with a chance to move up in the standards, which everybody wants. And they've also had a coaching change as well. They've got mm -hmm. a guy, an assistant in from Butler. Has, right. has their uh, change of play changed much or anything? 
It has, yes. it has. Uh, Rubik's playing more uh, inside out now, okay. which last year he played mostly inside, played out to about 15 feet. Uh, he'll shoot the three a lot more this year. Uh, they do a lot more ball screen as they did at Butler. Uh, it's a totally different system for them. And uh, defensively, they really get after you man to man and try to pressure you a lot and turn you over. Now, some of the schedule is a little different, and then each yeah. team gets uh, a couple of bye dates during the year. And uh -huh. y'all have come in these past two weeks. You got last uh, Thursday off, and right. this week you're going to get Saturday off. Do y'all notice any difference in the way y'all schedule things? No, we'll try to keep it the same for the guys. Uh, typically in the Sun Belt, you play Thursday, Saturday games. Right. Uh, and like you said, we, we had Thursday off, which gave, gave us an extra day to prepare for Arkansas State, which was good. Uh, but we'll treat this week just like last week, even though we'll play Thursday, we'll treat Saturday like it's still a game on that day, and then we'll practice Friday and Saturday. All right, and I know this is looking ahead, and uh, we actually talked to John Hartwell about it earlier. Uh -huh. ESPN's going to be coming to town next right. week on uh, next Saturday. That's going to be a big one, and I know you want the crowd behind you. Go ahead, give us a little, uh, uh, just tell the fans to come on out there. Well, yeah, I, I, and, I, and I tweeted about it, and <laughs> I'm on Twitter now. But uh, I tweeted about it the other day, man. Uh, the crowd... Uh, they just don't know how much an effect they can have on a game. You know, for me being a former player here, right. I really know what it did for us, and I know what it can do for our guys as well as our opponents. It can frustrate the opponents. So please, please, uh, Trojan Nation, please come out if you can. Uh, we got an exciting bunch who's still working hard and still getting after it, fighting for a chance to get in, get in in New Orleans. Yeah, not just next Saturday on ESPN, but this starting Thursday, this Thursday this against Thursday. South Alabama, a big game. They'll be routed. They'll be routed. All right, Ben, well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, stay tuned for more coming up on It's Tea Time. Welcome back to our final segment on It's Tea Time, and we're going to talk a little bit of softball today with the associate head coach of the softball team, and that's Sharon O'Mary. And, Coach, thanks for being here today. You're welcome. I know uh, with you being here, that means the season is here. I mean, you've got to be excited about that, and I know we've talked a lot with uh, Coach Millie Davis about mm -hmm. the field and we'll go a little bit over it, uh, but y'all finally been able to get on it, and I bet mm -hmm. that's just finally a relief to y'all, and, and what's the, the reception to it been? Oh, it's been wonderful. You know, we've, we've been on there for two practices now. Uh, the energy of the team lifted unbelievably, and uh, the girls really enjoy it. Um, I think that any time you get anything new, uh, it's a great feel for the kids, and uh, it's certainly lifted the energy of the team, and they're so super excited about Thursday, obviously with our opening game, right. and uh, we'll continue to practice on there for the next two days. And uh, it's a great facility. It's wonderful. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. The game has been moved mm -hmm. to 3 o'clock now. Yes. And uh, so fans remember that the uh, first pitch will be at 3 o'clock. But it's against Auburn. So mm -hmm. a big team coming in for that, really, the opening, the unveiling of mm -hmm. the new stadium. And, I mean, y'all just got to be really excited for that. We are. And obviously, any time you have a great opponent coming in like Auburn, in-state rival, SEC, um, it's going to be a great game, big game, big crowd, hopefully. Uh, but we feel really prepared for them. You know, we're, we're trying to treat it one game at a time. We obviously know who we're playing. But as we told our players, you know, just play your game. Um, you know, treat every pitch as it comes, every defensive play, every at bat. And I think if we do that and, and obviously play to our ability, uh, we can compete against anybody. Um, obviously, we're really excited about having them come in, of course, and, and then as we move through the weekend and, and play some other great opponents, um, I think we're in, in great shape to, to put on a great show this weekend. Oh, yeah, you've got a big weekend, the Subway mm -hmm. Invitational, and that includes mm -hmm. the number six team in the country, Alabama, mm -hmm. who I believe you all will be playing on Sunday. Sunday at 2.30. And mm -hmm. so you've got a big weekend, six teams coming in. Can you just talk about the <coughs> tournament and uh, kind of all that's going on with that? Sure. We have seven teams coming into Troy, um, which is a, is a great number of group coming in. Uh, we start off on Friday with Northwestern State, Friday night, um, from Louisiana, so that'll be a tough game. Saturday, we, we move into Memphis and uh, Kennesaw State. Okay. Uh, always have great battles against Kennesaw, and, and Memphis has always been a very strong, strong contender. Uh, and then, of course, Alabama on Sunday to, to close out the the competition at 2.30, um, super excited to play them, right. you know. But every game's going to be tough for us, and I think we just have to, again, like I said, play one pitch at a time. And uh, I think our girls will really put on a great show for you all. And for all the fans who haven't been able to mm -hmm. see the new facility, what can they expect 
uh, new amenities and things like that? Sure. Uh, well, let me just say it's one of the most beautiful facilities I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, we're so blessed to play in it. And obviously from the Chancellor, uh, John Hartwell, uh, the support we've been given to get that facility, number one, is just unbelievable. Right. Uh, from the amenities, I think, you know, the sight lines have improved dramatically. Right. We have new seating. We've got chair back seating. Um, now, some of the facilities not fully completed yet, but uh, from the fans' point of view, they're going to see a beautiful field. Um, you know, obviously, we've got a new press box right. um, catering to the fans' needs of what we need there, and uh, I think they're going to be really impressed. It, it's something else. Well, hopefully they enjoy that, and hopefully they enjoy a couple of wins as well. No, so absolutely. Good luck to you all this weekend. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Right. Join us again next week for more news and interviews only on It's Tea Time.